Hello, welcome to uh, the Red Devils Den, the first edition from the Manchester United podcast. We'll be talking all things Manchester United, obviously. Um, I've got Ryan, RJM, Tom, Dan and United Resurgent. Um, so, first of all, we're going to go through the Watford game, I think. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? Do you want to go with Tom first? Yeah, um, I mean, like we were saying before, I think it was just a case of job done. I don't think it was an ideal game. It wasn't anything to write home about, but like we were saying, it's just job done, into the next round, hopefully no injuries, minutes into legs. And I think importantly, it was getting another win after obviously going out against City before two massive games this week. I think it's, it's good to be going into training off the back of a win instead of off the back of a cup semi-final loss. So, yeah, I don't think there's too much to really go into there. I think it's just job done, hopefully get a nice draw um, and hopefully we can get our hands on it because I think the group could probably do the with the trophy. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Like you said, the game itself was, was nothing special for large parts of the game, you know. A lot of the players were sort of like a uh, walking pace. You can tell a lot of players hadn't had a lot of minutes. Um, good to get some minutes for Williams, Lingard, you know, because obviously they've been out in the cold for a while. Um, and I agree with what you said about getting the win after the City game, you know, get some confidence back for the massive Burnley game. So, yeah, I, I mean, at, at times, the first 15 minutes was very, very good. You know, we started fast, which has been a bit of a theme of, um, you know, since the Leeds game, which I think, you know, going behind to start, I think that was really addressed there, you know, with the two McDominay goals. Um, you know, I think Ollie's really put an emphasis on starting quick. Uh, so we obviously tried to do that yesterday, but because, you know, the players hadn't had a lot of minutes, you know, hadn't played together, I thought I felt like after the first 15, 20 minutes, they sort of ran out of ideas. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It's, it's good to see you know them working on starting quickly because if you go back a month ago, we were starting every game awfully well. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's exactly. what I was saying. Like before the Leeds game, you know, every game was going 1 0 down. Like you said, Southampton we went 2 0 down, ended up winning the game. But um, even the Sheffield United game, we went 1 0 down. Yeah, and it was sort of that good. was, yeah, it was like that was what woke us up. Mm. But um, it seems in the Leeds game, you know, when we started quick, we got the two early goals, and since then, I think he's really tried to push it into the players that we we have to be starting quick, and we cannot be conceding these early goals anymore. One of the issues, though, is the starts have gotten quicker, but the last two matches specifically, City and Watford, the second half, the performance just hasn't been there, and yeah. that's a big worry for me as we head towards the match at Liverpool. Uh, they're, they've been awful in the first half the last couple of times I've seen them, and they're a second half team, and if we're basically out of steam at, in the second half, we're going to be in big trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do we think about McTominay being cap- captain then? Because he's a bit controversial. Some, some people don't think he actually has that much ability. But what do you I think? I think that's a load of bollocks, mate, yeah. to be completely honest. Not every, <clears throat> not every player has to be world-class to be in a good squad. You know, he's, he's a fighter. He works hard. Last night, he covered every blade. I mean, fair enough, yeah, he had to because, you know, Donny naturally wants to get forward. But I, I think he, I think he, you know, he does the shirt very proud. You know, he's a player that I really, really like. You know, he wants to fight for the badge. He wants to play. He'll do anything that Oli asks of him, play in any position. And last night, I think he did very well when he was the best player on the pitch for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, he's been since the club since he was five, so... I think that our man suits him as well because he's tackling, he's tenacious, he wins the ball back. So yeah, mm-hmm. and obviously that's everyone good. gives everyone gives people a morning yesterday that um you give a few passes away, but that's everyone's going to do that. I mean, yeah. I just love him, he's got. I think he's he's the that rises to being captain as well. He sort of will relish that responsibility of having to step mm-hmm. up and lead the team, and because he's never hidden you know you think of his first season when he played in like the Chelsea game the Liverpool games the big Champions League games even yeah. when he was 21 22 he was the one who was standing up winning the midfield battle and you can just see he's a leader um yeah I don't, I, I, don't, 
I don't see what there's not to like about him, really. I, I just don't I don't get it. I absolutely love the lad. I really do. He hasn't got a fancy name and he's not from a European yeah. country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, me, though, I love, I, I love McTominay. I mean, in like the past 10, 15 years, we, we kind of moved on from this idea of like every captain needs to be the same, have to be hard, tough and all that. Hear me. Him now that there's no fans, we can hear exactly exactly what the players are saying mm. on, and like this, this this doesn't fit the fit fit the agenda against the captains in our team. But but it, but it's always the same people: Maguire, Fernandez, and and McTominay when he's on the pitch are the ones encouraging, motivating, shouting. Mm. He's, actually, he's definitely one of the most vocal on the pitch when he is there, and like I agree with what Tom said, he's a, he's a natural leader. Yeah, yeah. and um, the and uh, the biggest point of of McTominay is, is like I think a lot along with with Maguire, I think they both understand the size of the club, it, especially McTominay coming mm. through the academy. He's obviously Absolutely. a fan at heart and wants to win every game. Of course, he's not the, he's not the flashiest player, but but he but he puts a hundred percent in every game, and that's what you want. You need to set the example for everyone else to follow, even yeah. if your your example isn't amazing. As long as you can be clearly seen to be putting the effort in, you've got every chance chance of being a leader in the team. That's it. I mean, every manager post Sir Alex has loved him. Haven't they? Mourinho loves him. Even Sir Alex uh, loved him, didn't he? he was even Sir Alex loved yeah. him. He was, he was the one that told Jose Mourinho to start yeah. him more because yeah. he, he understands. I mean, like, like you said, he's not the most technically gifted player in the world, but he will give everything every single game. Definitely. Yeah. I think he's only 24 and he's just turned 24. Something like that, yeah. He's still very young. Like he's finished that he's starting to add goals to his game yep. defensively he's solid he wins the midfield battle I think his passing's improving that's one thing I've noticed he's starting to play a few more forward passes taking a he bit he drives forward really well I think he's, I noticed he's that he's really forward, improving he's, especially against the Leeds in the Leeds game he's running forward yeah. he could be a top box to box midfielder who's going to be very useful for us but yeah I just don't get why you wouldn't love especially coming through the academy as well they're always that that bit more special. That's it. You always that. feel, you know, yeah, you always feel a bit more love towards them, don't you, when they're one of your own. It's also, I feel like he develops every season as a player. He adds something new to his locker. Yeah. And the problem is on Twitter, you have people who made their opinion up about him when Mourinho was here and was using him as a cudgel against Pogba. And that's the McTominay they always see no matter what he does on the pitch. Yeah. Definitely. So... Uh, we from McTominay we've been talking about him for like five minutes um, <laughs> we got the Burnley game coming up um, so I wanted to go through like a start in 11 that we could sort of all agree on so yeah. what are we thinking obviously the hearing goal what about the defence um, I think you've got to go Aaron Wan-Bissaka you know he's, he's nailed on every week yeah. Um I would like to see Bailly in Maguire because I really have liked seeing that the past couple of weeks. I think Bailly complements Maguire really well with his pace. We just have to make sure Bailly's fit. That's, yeah, that, that is it. I mean, hopefully he's all right after last night. He says that he is, but whether, you know, the doctors will pass him fit is a different story. I mean, personally, I'd wrap him in cotton wool for the weekend at Anfield and just play uh, Axel Twanzebi and uh, Maguire. Yeah. I, got, I, like yeah, I would have said um, twan, maybe Twanze it is a hard, a hard choice because you want Bai to play both, but 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 in my opinion, if he gets injured again, I can't see him being no having much having much having much more of a United career if he gets injured for him. Which would be a massive shame because he's a quality defender, but he, he, has, he just yeah. hasn't been there. Does anyone know him? Do I mean like we then ha- have to rely on Twan Zebe because um, Lindelof is, I think, go 
going for sur- surgery soon, the last time that I read. And oh, really? Yeah, I, I knew he was injured, was but in I didn't back, think it was, was like that. It was going from playing for football. I, I, I don't know what it is, but... I that, read that, 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 that was, that was, when he played, so I assumed it was just media box. Did thought, anyone know how serious the injuries yes. are? It depends, but still, um, I, would, I would say wrap, wrap by up, uh, keep him at home to watch the game, and then unleash him at Anfield and ho- hopefully take out yeah. for the first minute. So Maguire and Swan Zabi as centre half. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Okay, all the man in the to be honest. If only you put um, Matic in front of him. He's yeah, also injured. Yeah. yeah, it's just if he's fit or not. Actually. Yeah, you can't tell if it's mind games or, or what's going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd probably go for yeah. Tellez at left back for the Burnley game. You know, I don't think they'll have much out wide going down the flanks, and we all know that they're gonna <clears throat> they're gonna sit behind the ball. And obviously, with Tellez being, you know, the more advanced fullback. I think it's a really good chance for him to to get balls into the box and then yeah. save Shaw. For Anfield, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I think Tellers was quite underrated last night because um, he, he, I created... think he put some very, very good crosses in. But in the second yeah. half, they dropped off. But we, as a team, dropped off in the second half. I think he created five chances in the first half, which is massive. And then yeah. second half, he only created one, but it was still double everyone else on the pitch, I believe. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. But you've got Greenwood, he's not known for his aerial ability. You've got Mata, you've got James, you've got yeah. Lingard. He's not got much to hit, so it was difficult. Yeah, I think if Cavani was on the pitch last night, he would have got to a few yeah. of those. There were some really good crosses. I mean, I think, uh, that that I think the there is a problem with starting Tellers is the fact that crosses in into the box. You've got two two centre backs at, at Burnley in Ben Mee and James Tarkovsky, who are absolute monsters of men. And I've seen this live because I went to see them play Burnley last year. And I swear they aren't some of the tallest, st- strongest people in the league. And yeah. and uh, trusting Martial or Bruno to get a header on top of that, it's kind of rough for him. I would say. Yeah. So 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 it's a tough choice because if because if you start Tellers, he's he he's basically going to be crossing for no reason. Because yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that, but I mean we're we're probably gonna be camped in their final third regardless. You know, if you if you keep putting the balls in and around the box, I mean he doesn't have to cross every time you put it back, he can come inside. So I I think it's still I think it's still a good option to have. A bit more craft in it from Tellers. Uh, yeah, just, out there yeah. is not only the crosses, but also he he shot from outside the box as we saw yesterday, and that's at least a threat they have to close down and kind of opens up space for other players. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so midfield, we think in McFred or no, McKitt? save McFred. I think that's too defensive Liverpool. for Burnley. Save <laughs> McFred for Liverpool, absolutely. Matic, yeah. Matic and I'm two. definitely Matic. Oh, Matic or Pogtic midfield for uh, Burnley oh, and then yes, save right. for the weekend. They, yeah. they, aren't, they aren't going to do much. And I mean, Ashley Barnes and Chris Wood are not fast players. So you can definitely no. spark Matic. Have, have, have maybe Pogba and Bruno or maybe Bruno and Van Dijk. Single pivot with two, maybe two advanced days, do you think? Yeah, yeah. that's what I think, yeah. yeah. Cool. Matic. So, so what are we thinking? Matic, Pogba and Bruno in the midfield. Yeah. yeah, I think Matic and Pogba have got that experience. They've got the physical size as well to deal with exactly, yeah. set pieces. Yeah, Pogba's got a bit more craft. <clears throat> Matic is good on the ball and obviously yeah. tough. It's going to be a tough game. It's not going to be easy, but yeah, you can. Always, I mean, like you say, I mean, it's Mat- Matic going to is going to sit, isn't he? Anyway, he's going to screen yeah. the back four, yeah. and if you have a creative player in Pogba and Bruno, you know, it's yeah. going to help break down that. Um, you know, that rigid Burnley defence because they yeah. probably will go five at the back or four, but it will um it will probably uh, they'll probably come into a six when they bring their wingers back. Yeah. So you know they're gonna be counting the halves. So and the more creative players you have on the pitch, the better really. Definitely. Yeah. I think when we're playing against a low block Matic and Pogba is probably the best thing to go with. But there were some rumours that Pogba was injured. So yeah. I saw that. 
I mean, Ollie didn't really give much away, did he? He said, sure, um, he was asked about Shaw, Lindelof and Pogba. He just said, injured, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he, he could sure. be back very soon, any of them, so. Um... Is Cavani still banned for the Burnley game? No, no, no he's I, I, uh... Yeah, he's back. Oh, is he back now? Cool. Yeah, um, so, Matic, Pogba and Bruno in the midfield. Um, if, if Pogba doesn't start, it's probably going to be Fred. Yeah, I'd um, say Fred looks on yeah. got his game um, on last night, didn't he? Uh, Fred got his rest last night, so yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Change them three round. I do love Fred. I think he's really come in in the last couple of years. Yeah, he's, he's proved me wrong. wrong. He yeah, has yeah, proved yeah. me wrong. I wasn't a massive fan. I didn't really see No, neither that, was so. I. He has, he has proved me wrong, to be fair. Yeah. It's because when he joined, you know, you saw the you saw the videos of him at Shakhtar Donetsk, and you think that all that he did was progress the ball from his half into the yeah. final third and the other half. You thought that was all he did, but he's got so many more qualities than that to his game. And I think he's slowly becoming a fan favourite because people are recognising, you know, that the, like the work that he puts in, what he does on the ball, and he's a tenacious little bloke as well. I really like him. Yeah, I, I just think with the Mourinho, he never got a consistent run of games. Like he was playing two games yeah. and he was dropped for one. I think he just needed like a consistent run of games and obviously he's got that now so yeah look Fred's been you know our most trusted midfield in big games now isn't it which I never saw coming so you know they're pretty yeah. solid they they cover a lot of ground and you know when one of them bursts forward with the ball they're both quite progressive with um with their dribbling they can they can both dribble fairly well and you know hand it off into um into Bruno or to the flanks so that's yeah, the thing I like with and Fred. I mean, sorry, uh, McTominay and Fred. You're never going to question their work rate, and so it's easier as a fan when they make a mistake to kind of excuse that. Whereas I feel sometimes with Paul Pogba or some of the other players in the past, you have, you know, you see them. They don't track their runner. They don't make the run necessarily into the area themselves, and that really makes fans angry in a way that I think just not being able to play a pass doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I think body language is a big thing as well when you see players you know, really, really trying to put in the effort in, like, like you said, I, I agree with that. You are going to excuse them more because you know they're, you know they're trying their best. But sometimes when you see Pogba lose the ball, Flapping you know, he, he, he doesn't track his runner and he, mm-hmm. he drops a little bit and it, it does frustrate you at times. You, you just think, well, just get back into the game. You know, go and get the ball back. Yeah, I think sometimes maybe Pogba does lack a bit of aggression, but I think his quality on the ball quite often makes up for anyway, but yeah, um, yeah, no, he's, there's no doubt in his ability. He's a yeah. fantastic player. So, front three, what, what we, Rashford is nailed on. Cavani, yep. would you would you go with him? I would. I would. I against those Burnley centre halves, I would. Yeah, and then Martial on the left. Yeah, I I like Martial off the left. To be honest, so I. I, I prefer yeah. him. I just. I've, I've always maintained this. I just don't quite see him as being the nine that's going to lead us forward and get us 30, 40 goals a season, scoring the big goals. I just don't quite see him being that. He nice was person. very good last season. And I think the way that that front three is set up to be as fluid as it is, I don't think any of them will ever hit 25, yeah. 30 goals. But they, I mean, they still outscored best front three yeah. in the world last season didn't they? It's because they all chipped in a sort of equal amount of goals, so I don't think any of them will hit that sort of amount of goals in the system that they are in. Yeah. But I still think he's a very good nine, although I yeah. would love to see, you know, when um, an Erling Haaland come in, a proper, proper goal scorer. I would yeah. love that. But I like, I like Martial running at players. I like it when he's facing them, running at them, because he just glides past people. He just goes oh, past yeah. them not there. And it's just... brilliant watching him come on for that. Yeah. It really is. He beats his fullback, cuts in on the right foot, takes a shot. It almost always works yeah. out for him. That's yeah. his best position. He has developed as a striker, though. I mean, from a couple of seasons ago, that his hold up play, his touch, his feeding on feeding into space. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, considering his body shape and size, he's a lot stronger than he looks. His hold up plays is getting there. Yeah. Yeah, I think Nash has improved a lot and thoroughly. I mean, Last season, at times, he looked unstoppable. I don't think he's been quite there this season. But I think towards the end of last season, I think he went like a run of four or five games without scoring, but he was playing amazing. And, you know, Greenwood mm. and Rashford, they were on fire. So 
Um, it's, it's like yeah. now. I mean, he's not necessarily banging the goals in, but he's still um, he's still contributing. I think he's got what is it four four goal contributions in his last four or five games, something like that. Something yeah, like something that. that yeah. As long as he's still contributing to the side, you know. I love Marcel, but one of the things that concerns me about him as as well is you want your number nine to be someone you can rely on when the team's not playing well. And it feels Mm. to me as though when the team's playing well, Marcel plays well. When the team's struggling, Marcel is struggling. Sort of like, dig you out. A bit like Cavani has done already. You know, Everton, when we couldn't quite get the top, he popped up and scored Southampton. He He scores two goals. You know, he just... That's the sort of thing that I want from our nine to sort of dig us out when we need it most. You think back to the last title winning campaign under Sir Alex, there were matches where we were awful. And then Robin Van Persie pops up with a brace, pops up with a hat trick. And that's what he, he, he won us that league. Yeah. Robin yeah. Van Persie. Yeah. No, I, I'd absolutely agree with that. And I think that's why Cavani was such a good addition in the summer. Because, you know, you have just, we have the front three that we have, you know, Mason, Mar- uh, Mason Martial. And Rashford, none of those. I mean, Mason maybe in a few years will be a proper nine, but none of those is an out and out nine. Yeah. That's why you know having that option there, a proper proper nine with brilliant movement, a real striker's instincts. You know, I think that's a really good option to have. And when Cavani does leave, I would like to see another player like that come in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think you mentioned before Haaland would be um, ideal for that. I mean, he would. Yeah. That's the dream. Holland is the dream. I will just say, I never want us to sign another Mino Raiola client again. So as long as he has that agent, I'm not interested in as great as he is. That That is the issue, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, still, I think I saw a report a couple of days ago about, you know, the club wouldn't mind working with Mino because of Ollie's personal connection with Erling. Yeah. But he's, he's still his agent. He's still going to cause the shit that he does, you know. Yeah, but I think a certain amount of that does come from Pogba wanting to leave. I think if he if he doesn't want yeah. to leave, I mean, uh, he, he said that he Pogba, didn't know that you know was going to say what he said because he was on the plane. But don't agents have to brief their players when they're going to talk? Anyway? Yeah, they're more than just agents nowadays. They're, they're basically best mates. They go on holiday together. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like, it, for me, it feels like Pogba hides behind Mino a little bit, and Mino just takes all the flat for him. Yeah, that, that is probably it. That but is probably, I think probably right. If 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 Pogba didn't want to leave, if he was happy, if he wants to sign a new contract, then Mino's not a problem because he doesn't need to come out and say these things, does he? So I think there's I wouldn't mind maybe putting up with that because then we're getting Haaland who's gonna score 40, 50 goals a season and win us everything. So I think there's yeah. balancing out there, isn't there? That is that is the thing, isn't it? I mean you, if you if you get in Haaland, how long are you gonna get him for before his yeah. agents that's kicking up shit you know but like you say you don't know how much of that does come from Pablo wanting to leave he could be he could be the one saying to do this um I mean because Mino was uh he was Jesse's agent wasn't he yeah I also think I I also think a lot of it isn't Pogba specifically wanting to leave United as a club it is probably him Frustrated with her being sold, sold a dream by, by Mourinho, and then and then it, it not working out. Yeah, you can definitely see there's some frustration, but you know, since Oli come in, I mean, you know, every every player seems to believe in in the plan. I mean, Bruno yeah, yeah. with his post the other week that was brilliant. I love seeing that. So you know, yeah. there's a clear plan in place to get back to where we need to be. Whether that's just a bit of frustration from Pogba because. It hasn't happened yet, or because you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was the report from the Athletic about a month ago, I think, where they were talking about how one of Pogba's issues is he wants the free role that Bruno Fernandez has in this team. Oh, I saw. Yeah, I saw that. But you you never cannot dislodge that. Bruno. He's had his chance at it. He didn't take it. Yeah, you, you got- cannot dislodge Bruno. These goal contributions are ridiculous. You know, unless you're going to be you know, getting the same goals, the same assists, then you can't take Bruno out of this side. Bruno is Manchester United a lot of the time. Yeah, and I, I can't understand Pogba's frustrations, to be fair. He's, he's a big player. He wants to win the big trophies. When he was signed, I should imagine they... You're the marquee signing. You're going to lead the team forward. And 
it hasn't really worked out like that, has it? But then again, at times, he hasn't quite helped himself. But I'd say it's more, it's, it's 50-50, I think, with the club not quite backing him up and getting the players that he needs. Playing yeah, in no, I, I do agree with this. Yeah, he's important. not exactly pub himself in glory at all times as well. Often, yeah. one of the issues I've had with him is when he first, the rumours started coming out, he wanted to leave under Ali. Uh, I think it was Mino Rayo listen something about how Ali needs to worry about his own team and his own future instead yeah. of what Roma's doing. And Pogba said nothing about that. You have to defend yeah. your manager. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then the, the thing the other week as well that Pogba only come out and made a statement after I think it was Bill said something about him sacking Raiola. Yeah. And that was the only reason. Even, even then he was only coming out to defend his agent. Yeah, he was defending Mino, wasn't he? Instead of the club, you know, he, it, it was only when Bill said about him. Sacking me, no, if he didn't get in the mood, that he come out and said, Oh no, that's not true. I'm going to defend him. And he, was, he came out, you know, when they said that he quit the France side because yeah. of, um, I can't remember exactly why, but he came out the same day and shut that down yeah. as well. So it's, it's so frustrating because, I mean, on technical ability, he's probably the best player at the club. And he's got every. You just want to like shape him, say, come on. Yeah. You just want to shape him. In your world, being a midfielder, though, you could just piss the league. You can be the best midfielder in the world if you get your head right. Yeah. If it was uh, Paul Pogba with Scott McTominay's mentality, you'd have one of the best players in the world. And instead, we have. (laughs) Absolutely. We're going to get maybe 40, 50 million for in the summer. Yeah. But you know he's he's going. But I mean he's been putting in some good performances lately. So as long as he sort of applies himself and puts in those performances until the summer, I've got no qualms with him going. You know, yeah, I mean, definitely. fair enough. You know, clean slate, no more Mino clients. Yeah, a Halland's a Mino client. <laughs> There's other strikers out there. We, have, I mean, yeah. I know that uh, Haaland's the most promising one in the world right now. But uh, you know, you, you just don't want that disruption around your team, in my opinion. <coughs> Went a bit off pace. Yeah, there, it is is a tricky one, isn't it? Because you can't say get a different agent and we'll sign you. Yeah. <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the next you know, in business with Raiola? It's just one of the, they have no Raiola clients on the book. They haven't signed one, I think, four or five years. And I think that's the way United should go. Just we're not doing business with me and Raiola, period. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we're going to move it on to transfers a bit we obviously had a good news um regarding to regarding diallo the other day um what what, how good do you think he can be i can be i think he can be as good as you know as good as as good as he wants to be as long as he's willing to work and he really he really looks like he's looking forward to it and he's and he's willing you know so i'm really looking forward to seeing him obviously you can't really judge him on well you can judge him on sort of the minutes that he has played for atlanta but you don't know how that's going to work in and around the Premier League. So I think he will go into the youth setup for a while. But he's a very promising player, that's for sure. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I just don't want us fans to um, put too much pressure on him. I just want him to like, develop and see what he wants to be. Like I've already yeah. seen comparisons on Twitter with that Greenwood and stuff and all this, all this shit. But I just want him to develop and see what he wants to be. Really. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah, there's a lot of excitement around them, which there naturally will be, but you sort of you do have to just let these players develop. Yeah, he did supposedly see him in that second bracket underneath Ansu Fati is the one of the best young players in the world, and that says everything to me about the, t- the ceiling that he has with his talent. The only question is how can we best manage to get that out of him? And yeah. given the way that our fan base is, throwing him straight into the team just isn't the answer. A couple of matches in the under-23s. I think they have Leicester on the 18th and Liverpool after that. And then maybe we can bring him in in the FA Cup fourth round if we have a nice move. Yeah. 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 It's a shame um, Polistri got COVID. I thought last night was yeah. perfect for him. Same especially yeah. with, yeah. with how narrow Matu was coming. I think that would have been perfect for him to exploit that right side because there was nothing on that right side and Williams was getting marked out of the game. So that's a shame. I know that's a bit off topic, but... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I saw the average positions. He was almost playing number 10, Matt, though, with... Uh, yeah, with and Williams them, just, um, uh, was just yeah. marked out of the game. There was just nothing on that side. Yeah. Um, so in terms of... Yeah, we're obviously in sort of in a title race at the moment. Um do you reckon? Do you reckon we could do that? You know, at, at the moment we're on decent form. 
do you think you know we really need any transfers in January to sort of kick ourselves on? I'd love Sancho in January, but probably not going to happen, is it? <laughs> no, I don't, that's definitely not going to happen. I did do a bit of looking, and I found um, a player from uh, AZ Alkmaar called, uh, I think it's Coot Miners. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, 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 yeah he's, he can play. He can play defensive midfield. He can play centre half. And in the Eredivisie this year, from these positions, he scored nine goals and got three assists in fifteen games from from defensive midfield. He takes yeah. a lot of set pieces. Is just one thing to be aware of that inflates the numbers a little bit, like Tellez when he was in uh, Porto. He was in at Porto, but uh, yeah, he's obviously a very talented player. You know, he's only 22 as well, and I think we could get him for a decent price. So whether that's one to look out for the, for the future. Yeah, it's always tough in January. I think it's one of them that if you can find the right deal, then go for it. But it's, it's really hard. It's not as easy as some fans make out just to sign players in January. Such yeah. a tough luck. It's, 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 a club's going to be losing an important player halfway through the season without a chance to replace them. So they're not going to willingly sell unless it's a situation where they need the money, like yeah. Sporting did last January with uh, Bruno. So it's going to be tough. I don't, I don't think we're going to get anybody who's going to come in who's going to push us on to the, the title. I don't think we're going to get yeah. a signing of that calibre. But I think summer's going to be where we do it. And then next season is going to be a serious title charge, Champions League, yeah. get to the latter stages. Yeah. Anything this season, I think, is just a bonus. I think if we can get ourselves in the title race come end of March, beginning of April, brilliant. But it's just about closing the gap and seeing how far we can really go. Yeah, I think that is what this season is about. And it is about closing that gap that's been so wide over the past couple of years. I mean, yes, we are in a title race, <clears throat> but I won't be massively disappointed if we don't win it this season, because it is about closing the gap. As long as we are, you know, ch challenging in around second, third, you know, with with the gap away from the top, there's a lot less. Then I think that's good progress. And if we win a cup, then that's excellent. And then we, next season is where we, you know, we get a few more players in the summer that will take us that extra step to yeah, win or mount a serious, like a very, very serious title charge. Yeah, as you guys are saying, we're definitely ahead of schedule, so it's not too concerning yeah. if we're not able to see it out and win the title this season. Mm -hmm. But I, I think one of my big concerns looking at the January market is the center half position. I just look at the injury prone, I guess, history of uh, Bailly and Twanzebi, and then Lindelof's got a back problem. So the only center half we can really rely on for the rest of the season is Harry Maguire. And I'd love to sign Ozan Kabak from uh, Schalke to come in. I've been seeing a lot about him recently. He's really yeah. highly rated. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the trouble is, like like Tom was saying, is getting these players in January and halfway through the season. Well, I mean, Kabak is available right now. Schalke need the money, which is one of the reasons why I think yeah. that's one that we can approach. The issue is, I don't know if United are looking for him specifically or if they want to wait. And they're again, they're in a relegation battle as well, aren't they? Schalke, they're, they're struggling at the bottom of the league, so do they want to yeah. lose a big centre half in January when they could potentially go down? You know, I think it's that's why it's so, so tough. But um, listen, if we beat Burnley and then we go and win on Sunday... Who knows? Because ultimately we'll be what six points clear at the top, and yeah, it would, would be closer with the games in hand. Yeah. I put, I'd rather have the points on the board than have to fight with with games in hand. As we've known, we've been speaking about a game in hand all season, <laughs> we so. Um, oh, so we have, yeah, we have. You're, you're absolutely bang on every single every single week. Oh, but we got a game in hand. We, you know, we have no points in the game, game in hand. But then if we don't win the game in hand, you know, it it's pointless. But um, yeah, I just uh, it's interesting to see how far we can go. I think if we can stay relatively fit as a squad, not many injuries, just keeping that gap as not thirty points like it has been. You know, it's yeah, that's exactly far yeah. Too big. If we can keep it down to maybe nine points, ten points, seven points, I think that's a fairly successful season. When the season started, what I was really hoping for was a points tally somewhere in the mid-70s, 75, 76 points. 
you know, build on last season, get an extra 10 points, two points a game, and then next year push into that 80 something bracket with a title challenge. So mm-hmm. if we can get there, that'd be fantastic. That's yeah, the thing. I mean, on track anyway. Go on. No, no, go on. Sorry. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, nobody was really expecting us to be in a title race this season. Yeah, you still got, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people saying, oh, sack Oli, sack Oli. But yeah. yeah um, yeah, sack Oli and we win this title where Oli has got us in the position that we're in now. Well, yeah. no, they'll just say it's Bruno Fernandes because evidently the manager doesn't get credit for signing players, even though they slated previous managers for signing bad players. Yeah, it's, yeah. you can't win. No. Yeah, spot on. Um, so what are we thinking in terms of uh, the position that we need to strengthen in? Because, you know, we've, you've m- mentioned a couple of players, but if there's one position you would strengthen, what, what would it be? What, right now in January? Yeah. It has to be centre out, doesn't it? If you have to if you have to, you know, choose a position to strengthen in January, it is centre out because of um because of like uh Rizzoli was mentioning, you know, with the um the fitness of Bailly, Lindelof who apparently needs surgery, did you say? And uh, Axel hasn't got the best injury record. So you have to go and get a centre half if you have to choose one player. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, we're going to have a new center half in the squad once the January window's over. If we move on a couple of players, Phil Jones will be back in the squad. So I know we're all excited about that. Oh fuck! Fuck him off. <laughs> pay, his, pay him. Pay him the rest of his wages and get him out of the club. He's a pain in the ass. <laughs> if we're not willing to do that, just loan him out to somebody. I know Newcastle wants him. Just send him oh, there. They pay five percent of his wages. Just get rid of him. Yeah. I do feel so bad for him though because like it's just genuinely not. I mean, like the entire. I mean, they're there, there. It's no surprise that um, Sir Alex said that he was the uh, best centre back that he that he's ever seen, and not find all that rubbish in training. Yeah, I swear, yeah. Great. Didn't he say he could be the best player that Man United ever had? Yeah, he did. Yeah, the best centre back I think said that United have ever had. It could have been, but 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 injuries have completely ruined his com- com- confidence. Yeah, he hasn't had a, had had a run of games since 2014. It's just it's a shame. That's the it's thing. A shame. He's not, he's not actually a bad defender. He's just become a bit of a meme, and every time he's played, he's yeah, he's just yeah. Not I mean, up there. but it, I think if he can get fit. And have a good run of games, he'd be very useful for like for for a Newcastle or something like that because he's not actually a bad defender. Yeah. When when did we get him? Was it about uh, 2011 from Blackburn, something like that? Yeah. I remember yeah. when he came in, he looked he looked like a real prospect. I mean, he was getting in the England side from very yeah. very young. But yeah, yeah. Like, like you say, injuries have ruined like him. He has become yeah. a bit of a meme, and he's not a very graceful guy. <laughs> so no, he's, not, he's not the most uh, ideal. Central and it seems like all of the mistakes that he makes have been of of a high profile, like in the FA Cup final when he gave away a penalty to Chelsea. Yeah. Scored yeah, the goal away at Spurs, didn't he, a couple of years ago? Yeah. Last season against Sheffield United, just had an absolute nightmare. Didn't he come in against City as well when Maguire was injured? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah he, he got done by the point, didn't he? And then he scored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you feel sort of feel sorry for the guy because at one point he probably could have been a, a top player obviously um, but it's not exactly hard then the whole fan base or the whole football community you could say doesn't think you're a good player all the time no so, yeah, I suppose it is at the moment I suppose he's just a drain on wages isn't he in a squad place well, 100 grand a week isn't he good oh, yeah it's not 100 grand. Maybe a bad Woodward signing players to new contracts to protect their value when no one's going to pay a transfer fee for them, anyways. <laughs> commercial genius. I did, I did, I think they did the right thing in cutting their losses with Sanchez. Oh, massively. You know, they sort of like they sort of tore up the contract, right? You go, you can go to Inter Milan if we sort of call it quits now. You know, yeah. I think that was the right thing to do. I was really happy to see Ollie come out and say, uh, just before the Burnley match that uh, Rojo, Romero and uh, Foster Mensa wouldn't be having their contracts extended and they're free to go because my fear was Woodward would activate the one-year options to try to get a two, three million transfer fee and we'd be stuck with them again. 
yeah it's that sort of ruthless transfer approach that you need isn't it to clear these these players out get quality players in yeah you you take a loss because you're not going to get millions and millions from them, are you they're not no not players. at all and then they're, they're, on their wages as well it's just if you're going to let sort of club that are going to want them you're going to be negotiating down to the penny exactly. as well it's better to let them go let them find a club you know rather than wasting yeah. weeks being no because the club's notoriously bad at selling anyway yeah yeah, it's one of the things, though, that uh, really highlights the job Ollie's done with the incomings in the transfer market is we've gone from Phil Jones, uh, Jesse Lingard and uh, Andreas Pereira to Harry Maguire, Bruno Fernandes and Donny van de Beek, which is just yeah. levels yeah. different. Yeah. There's been a definite... so we've, come a long, we've come a long way, boys, we have. <laughs> yeah, we really have. Yeah, 100%. It is nice to have a proper squad again when you, where you can sort of like last night put the second string players out and trust them to do a job. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to go on to one more topic. We've had, we had news the other day that Rojo and Romero were going to be released. Um, a lot, a lot, there's been some sort of controversy about not letting Romero have his move in the summer. So what, what do you think about that? I think it was harsh because he's been a great servant to the club. You know, and he, he came in especially in that um, 2017 when we were in the Europa League. Uh, Jose trusted him all the way up to the final, didn't he? Yeah. And he's, I think he's easily been the best number two keeper in the Premier League for a number of years. Oh, massive, yeah, definitely. I think, I think he's, he's a top... professional too. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's, he's yeah. never, you know, kicked up anything like he easily could have done with his agent. I mean, I know that his, his wife mentioned something in the summer, didn't she? Yeah. But, I mean, she, I think she was right to be frustrated because he, he just wants to play. And yeah. now that, obviously, Henderson's back and he's, he's he's back fighting for minutes, you know, Romero's... I mean, he's just been to Argentina. He's not even in Manchester, is he? No. So, he, he just wants to play and he's a top keeper. And I think, you know, I think he should just be allowed to go because he's served us really, really well. I think he's... He's been unlucky. So there's been a few cup runs where he's got us to the latter stages, and then he's been dropped for De Gea. Yeah, like FA, yeah. FA Cups, and you know he's he's done all the work, and then when it comes to the big games, he doesn't even get the minutes. So I, I think, I think he's very similar there. to Emmy Martinez in that yeah. he's much too good to be a number two, but at another Premier League club, he he could start. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think Villa were after Romero as well as Martinez, were not it? Yeah. yeah, I think that's what was. Was that why they got the Martinez, or do they want them both? They wanted Martinez was their first choice. The fee was yeah. a little high, so they tried for Romero. Then they went back for Martinez when we didn't. Work. didn't they tried to get um, Romero, didn't they? But they didn't want to sell to a to um, a yeah. club that was that close yeah. to us in the table or something. Didn't Villa bid like eight million, but United wanted wanted ten or something? I'm sure I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something silly like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. No. Romero, in my opinion, has been very harshly treated. Like Tom was saying, first of all, last season, Ollie wouldn't pick him in the semifinals. It seemed to be a rule that uh, Romero played until the quarterfinals in the Cups, and then we switched the keepers, and I wasn't a fan of it. Romero's good enough to play in those games. So I thought he's very good there. And then we get to the summer. He, you signed on a free transfer. It's not like we're trying to make back a fee yeah. on him. Yeah, I know, yeah. The club let him go. That is one thing that, you know, I was really compliment Jose for was trusting him in, in the Europa League final, letting him play the whole thing. Because like you say, he's good enough. He's easily good enough to start for another Premier League side. So I think he, I think he does deserve his move and we, we should just let him go and, you know, stand his, obviously, I mean, his contract's up anyway, but he, he deserves the move. He probably deserved it last summer as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think we've been going for like 50 minutes now, so I think we'll probably end it there. Um, it's flown by. I quite enjoyed that. So yeah, um, massively enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. Hopefully, many yeah. more to come. Yeah. yeah. So, anyone who watched, I'm so with some of you. Um, thanks for watching. I will see you soon.